Well, it's lovely to be back here with you at St. Thomas, Thomas's College, St. Thomas of Canterbury College. Uh, we're coming to the end of the academic year, and it's also uh, quite an emotional time. I've heard that already, as this fine group of young men about to bid farewell uh, to this place. St. Thomas is a great school. And perhaps it might be good for us to look and ask the question, what makes it great? There are many answers to that question, of course. Let's park it to one side for a minute. And I want to tell you about an article I was reading just a while ago about what made the 2016 Olympics so great. And the article I was reading was from a fellow who works as an anesthesiologist. I don't know what that was, but it's someone, it's a doctor, who researches into human performance and physiology. It's about what makes a good sports person. Now, I'm a bit of a sports nut, so I'm very happy uh, to, I'm very happy to be reading this article. In fact, straight after this mass, I'm rushing out to the golf course. I've got a game of golf ball this morning. Looking forward to that as well. So anyway, this fellow's name is Michael Joyner, and he's a, an anesthesiologist, and he was looking who was the greatest athlete at the 2016 Rio Olympics. Who was the best performer there? Now the results surprised me because according to this man's research, the best athlete at the last Olympics was an American woman, an American swimmer, her name is Catherine Ledecky. Now one commentator said she's the best, the greatest athlete in the world today by far. I was a bit surprised about that. But this is what Michael Joyner said. He said she's dominating by the widest margin in any international sport because she wins by one or two percent. Now I don't think that was very much. But he said imagine in the 10,000 metres. If you win by 1 or 2 percent in the 10,000 metres, you win by 100 or 200 metres. That, that would be a big win, wouldn't it? Or the Tour de France, if you won by 2 percent, you'd win by 40 minutes. So this woman, Catherine Ledecky, is, according to this man, one of the greatest athletes we've seen. Now you might be thinking, hold on a minute, Father John, this is the final mass of St Thomas' school. <coughs> Why are you talking about Catherine Ledecky? Well, here's the thing. She holds the 400, the 800, and the 1500 meter world records. She won many medals at the Rio Olympics. But this is what she told the journalists after she won her last gold medal. This is what she said. She said, my Catholic faith is very important to me. It always has been and it always will be. It's a part of who I am. I feel comfortable practicing my faith. It helps me put things in perspective. Now perhaps the darling of the last real Olympics was the young American gymnast Simone Biles. She won, she won 14 Olympic medals. She won um, 10 gold, 2 silver, 2 bronze. Now the newspapers in New Zealand and all around the world said, Simone Biles, what a beautiful young woman she is. What a beautiful attitude she has to competition. Because she had a really tough beginning in her life. Remember, she was raised by her grandparents because her father abandoned her and her mother was a drug addict. What a remarkable young woman to have done what she has. None of the newspapers in New Zealand mention this though, because she's also a very strong Catholic. She always carries a statue of Saint Sebastian in her gymnast bag. Saint Sebastian, by the way, patron saint of athletes. And she always carries also with her in her pocket her rosary bag. Finally, brothers, perhaps, perhaps the most exciting athlete at the last 
Rio Olympics was Usain Bolt. What a great thing it is to watch him run. How exciting. Next time you see him run, look closely because he always wears, you might have noticed this, a gold chain around his neck. Usain Bolt always does. But attached to that gold chain is a small gold medallion. And you know, it's, it's a miraculous medal. And Usain Bolt wears a miraculous medal and he always makes the sign of the cross before he runs because you've probably guessed it already. He's a very strong Catholic. In fact, his full name is Usain St. Leo Bolt. His parents named him after St. Leo the Great. And he says that his Catholic faith is really important to him. And here's my point, I'm going to finish now. But here's my point to you young men who are leading St. Thomas' today. Please don't think for a minute that your faith is an obstacle to achieving great things in your life. Please don't think that. I've tried to demonstrate this morning that being a man of faith will put you in a position to live life to the full. That's the freedom we heard Luke speak about as he began this mess. You see, faith takes nothing away but it gives you something great. Your faith gives you a sense of identity and it allows you to flourish. And I put it to you, that's one of the greatest things about this school. That at the heart of this school is a deep sense of faith and a deep sense of identity that Edmund Rice has brought to this place. Now, I was running a little bit late, I've got some words of Pope Benedict, but they're in my top pockets, so I have to try and get them out of my business here. Here's Pope Benedict, my final words for you today. <coughs> Let the risen Jesus enter into your life. Welcome him as a friend with trust, because he is life. If up until now you have kept him at a distance, step forward. He will receive you with open arms. If you've been indifferent, take a risk. You will never be disappointed. And following him, if it seems difficult, don't be afraid. Trust him. Be confident that he has chosen you. He is with you. He will give you the peace you are looking for and the strength to live as he would have you do. Beautiful words from Pope Francis and I offer them to you the young men who are leaving this school very soon.